or Todd did right there, bunting it right back to the pitcher. Scott came off, fielded it cleanly, and he had to make a decision right away. He got to jump on the ball like that, go to second, cut down that lead runner. As he finished out his spectacular career with the Evansville Aces, of course, we're talking Tim Marks, who was the starting catcher. Foul territory, Charles Gilmore, as we said it defensively, four rights, Gilmore at first. Corey Lamb at second, Louis Merritt at the shortstop, and Dennis Maynard at third. Again, it's Bullock behind the plate. Outfield, Todd Hayes, Sean Livers, and Bill Hammonds. That is left center. And right. tough competitors on the field as well. Still looking for that first hit of the ball game, and it's going to go 1-3. There was some thought or some concern there, but Gilmore held on. Scott Hart to Gilmore, one away. Well, I'll tell you what happened there. Scotty fielded the ball, and instead of just making a good throw to first base, he tried to throw it real hard. And if when you're that close, you're going to handcuff your teammate there. Gilmore did a good job just catching the ball and hanging on. Aaron Sheff. RBIs and four stolen bases. First and second for the Wildcats of modern day. Bottom half of the second inning. We try to move him up. Want to go for the fourth? How about first base? Second and third, and Griff gets the job done. Once again, that situation, you do not want to bunt the back ball back to the pitcher if you can avoid it. Both times we've seen it, it's gone right back to Scott Hart. That one was bunted hard enough to where he could almost look to second. Then he turned around to look to third. And not a play to either base. Still had enough time to get the guy at first. Shortstop. To return here for the 91 semi-state. And that'll be good baseball. Trying to get out of it cheaply. A little toss there to Charles Gilmore. So for the third time, it goes 1-3 here in the inning. That's the way they went down. Two in the book, still scoreless, and back out to Bossy Field after this timeout. The hitters, but it's pretty mixed up even, and now we see a good defensive play by Maynard at third. And see if they can tag the base runner. No, but it looks like the old Dennis Maynard is back. Uh, a nice defensive play there to stop the ball. Well, it kind of took a funny hop when it hit the grass area down there in front of third base. He did a good job just grabbing the ball, keeping it in the infield, and then made a good throw over there, kind of pulled Gilmore off the bag a little bit. I'm sure that he was trying to rush his throw because it took such a high hop and the speed of Neymar enabled him to get down the bases like that. You have to have a good throw like that and it just pulled him off the bag. Gilmore was not able to apply the tag. Here's our first down in the dugout or something or if one of the other players is on base and has a little bit of trouble getting his equipment together a catcher for instance you're going to have a delay like that something un out of the ordinary that situation right there but if you're a good pitcher like brian is and we've seen him a couple times on tv has got a big pickoff move as far as being a left-hander so if you're right you have to stay a little bit closer to the base over there but as a pitcher, you're not going to let something like that affect you. We might have saw four straight balls there affect that, but he should come back and pitch like he's been doing all game. Charles Gilmore wanted to tie up the game with that swing. It's out of play. Got good distance on the ball. I guess about 300 feet away, but foul here as we watch it on our first base side. Nothing in two here to Gilmore. Headed to Purdue next year. Is he going to try to play baseball up there? I think that, and he may have another sport picked out as well. He is a fine athlete and uh, a very smart athlete. Actually, he got accepted on an academic scholarship. And I'm sure mom and dad are proud of that. But he has been the big guy as far as rights and RBIs all season long. We talked about it earlier. Leading the team in RBIs, picked up a total of 26 on the season. His overall average coming into tonight's play at 386. He's also picked up eight doubles, 37 total bases. Corey Lamb, four straight balls issued to him. He's on it first, and now by four steps. And we'll check him back, says Shapker. One for one now. He reached on a pair of walks back in the first inning, and again in the fourth inning, he came around to score in that fourth inning. This will bring up Charles Gilmore, 0 for 1 today. Received an intentional walk back in the first inning and a strikeout victim an inning ago back in the fourth. Should mention, by the way, that the new pitcher for modern day is Todd Niemeyer. I guess we got too caught up in our uh, reminiscing of the high school level. And even though, uh, and I wasn't here back when the triplets were about, but still the top show in town was Aces basketball and high school sports. Well, I think when you talk about the triplet situation, everybody kind of took the triplets for granted. Bad throw to the outfield, 90 feet away, Corey Lamb. And that 
was a fundamental breakdown somewhere in the modern day seeing things right there. The runner was off with the pitch. It was kind of a bunt and run situation. Gilmore elected to go after the ball, even though it was kind of outside. Sills came up with a catch through to second base, but neither Maurer or Fisher had broke the cover second base, so nobody was there in the throwing it up out in center field. So Wright looking to jump back on top, top half of the fist, scheduled for seven. Big pitch there from Niemeyer. And you're asking yourself, I'm sure, is Niemeyer tired from this afternoon? Well, he threw Tuesday against Harrison. He was used a little bit this afternoon. When you look at his numbers, both he and Shapker have had pretty good years. Tied on the season at six and four. Overall ERA at 2.24. As he gets behind, Corey Sills. The right pad through the back on top, four to three. And you don't root for either team, but you hate to see something decided on a fluke like that. I'm sure it's not over to this point. But that's a tough break from out of day. Well, we've seen the offense generated the last couple, three innings, so you know that both clubs have found what they're looking for as far as their bats are concerned. They struggled a little bit the first couple innings. Looking down the middle, and again, it's a walk given up. And here comes Charles Gilmore, looking to pad to that lead. Again, it's four to three rights. And that is the fourth time that Corey Lamb has been on base, three via the walk. He also picked up a base hit and scored a run back in the fifth inning. Gilmore 0 for 2 today, received an intentional walk back in the first inning. Coming up in the bottom half of the inning, Sanwell, Foles, and Shapker. That is four, five, and six for the Wildcats. Just a look ahead. Swing away a foul, hit and run must have been on. Lamb, a good jump, will have to go back. I think that was just a swinging strike, and the ball ended up out of play. So uh, Lamb was trying to go to third base, maybe, since it got past the catcher like that. He is only entitled to remain at second. Todd Hayes on deck. Ruling there. Another in scoring position. For the Panthers, and a painful one on the shoulder. And that wasn't too much off speed either. Definitely not the way you want to start an inning for modern day. Allowing a walk and now a hit batter, so you've got first and second, nobody out. Prime opportunity. Sure. To the backhand didn't work, so it's the third base hit for the Panthers. And that is the second on the afternoon for Todd Hayes. Both singles have been to left field. This is the first baseman for Charles Gilmore. Strikeout victim looking back in the first inning. Two away in the top of our third inning. Bossy again leading by a score of one to nothing. Don't forget tomorrow night on TV 52. It's back with Little League Baseball as this week we will uh, take a look at the West. Hayes here going and thought better of it. That can cause trouble. He changed his mind after about 10 steps. And neither one of these catchers here this afternoon are afraid to use their arm. Uh, they have confidence in the throws and though they have a good throwing arm, not a lot of throwing errors as far as the season is concerned. So anytime as a base runner, the catchers see maybe an extra step or two off the base, look for him to gun him down or at least try to. Count one and one here to Charles Gilmore, the senior. Six seniors in the lineup this evening for rights. Charles has been their big RBI man all year. Leads the team with 16. And not really a running situation here. Scott Hayes has not have a stolen base on the season. And, and just as I say that, there he goes. Got there in time. That was closer than I thought originally. Tag put on by David McCutcheon. So Wright's trying to uh, tie it up with Hayes now in scoring position. And once again, I think he can attribute that stolen base to Dickinson just because he has a slow move. Takes a lot of time between his windup and his actual delivery of the pitch. And that throw just a little bit off to the shortstop side of second base. So uh, Hayes able to get in, sneak in with a stolen base. Two balls and one strike here to Charles Gilmore. Taking a nice shot right past Chuck Shum at third. This is going to tie up your ball game. Incoming. 
John Hayes. RBI single for Gilmore. That ball was just hit too hard for Shum to have any type of play down at third base. He was kind of playing off of the third base line a little bit. This early in the game, you don't want to worry about trying to protect the line for the extra base hits. Came off the bat so fast, he did not have a chance to even get his body over. He tried to backhand it, but was unable to come up with it. First baseman, Charles Gilmore, one for two today, a strikeout victim in the first and picked up an RBI single in the third. After getting Meredith, here is batter number eight in the top half of the fourth inning. Hammonds awaits on deck. Senior Gilmore. This is going to shot to go over the head of Matt Wendell. It is off the wall. Bring across another. Todd Hayes crossed the plate. A two RBI double for Charles Gilmore. And when it rains, it seems to pour. Situation here, two outs. You had runners on the first and second base, or first and third base, and really concentrated. You got a strikeout victim for Maynard to get the second out of the inning. Then they see uh, offense Down presence out there. He's kind of like John McCauley as far as getting the ball, getting a sign, and coming back rather quickly with his pitches, and it's going to help him as a pitcher keep concentrating to get picked off, possibly taking yourself out of an inning. Trying to end the inning. Dennis Maynard to Charles Gilmore, who holds on. And now we've seen five complete. We're still a five-run lead for the Wright Panthers. Our score is 6-1. to one. And you're watching Bossy and Wright in the 1991 SIAC High